spiritual now too, is I'm going to be saying. And welcome to Spiritual How-Tos. I'm Debbie Cheney, and yes, this still is Spiritual How-Tos. It just happens to be the last lesson for this year. It's December, the end of the year of 2022 as I record this. So I just thought I would do it upon outside and upon my boat at my thinking spot. So what we're doing is we're concluding looking at the Beatitudes, and we're looking at Spiritual How-Tos how to live by kingdom values and kingdom principles. So as we conclude looking at the Beatitudes, we notice that there's four sets of warnings and there's four sets of choices that you and I are presented with. Last week we looked at the first two sets, the wide gate and the two kinds of prophets. And today we're gonna to conclude by looking at the last two warnings, the last two choices. Now, this lesson today is about the choice we have that Jesus describes as two different kinds of disciples. Two different kinds of disciples. Um, and he talks about these disciples and the way he talks about them has always made me fearful. It's always kind of put me in check um, because they're, they're challenging verses to look at and they're very confusing at the same time. Because what he's describing in Matthew 7 verses 21 to 23 are these disciples that are doing remarkable things. There's this guy Jesus is talking about, and he seems to be doing all the right things. In fact, it says this guy is prophesying. He's saying, Lord, Lord. In other words, he's calling Jesus by the right name. He's using the right words. He's claiming Jesus' Lordship over his life. Lord, didn't we prophesy in your name? Didn't we foretell future events? Didn't we speak your message? Didn't we act in the role of the prophet? This disciple is saying, Lord, didn't we evict demonic spirits? Didn't we cast out demons? Didn't we do those things, Lord? And this same disciple says, didn't we perform miracles? Lord, Lord, didn't we perform miracles? Didn't we build great kingdoms? Didn't we write books? Because even in the Greek, that word means to write. So here was this one disciple that Jesus is describing as a kind of disciple who seems to be doing all the right things. If I'm being honest with you, which I try to be, these three things that Jesus mentioned are things that I actually aspire to. I aspire to be the one that can walk in the prophetic, that can speak the message of the Lord. I aspire to be one that will evict demonic spirits. And honestly, I aspire to be one that will do miracles that will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover, that will restore blind eyes and that will heal lame bodies and that will mend broken hearts. I aspire to do those things. So it's crazy to me. Oh, and by the way, I even aspire to write a book. I really do, but anyway. So it's crazy to me that Jesus responds to that disciple who said, Lord, didn't we do all these things was this. Jesus said, leave me, depart from me. You missed the boat, one translation says. Your works don't impress me. What I really wanted was you. Not what you could do with your life, not what you could do for me. I wanted to know you intimately and I wanted to, you to let me into your life intimately. For real, not for show. That was Jesus' response to this disciple that seemed to be doing all the right things. This is why this verse has always scared me. I, ouch, ouch. Doing things for Jesus and not knowing him personally, secretly, intimately is what Jesus is addressing as a warning about being a disciple. It is mind boggling to me and it's very confusing that they were still called disciples. This disciple was still called a disciple and this is even more mind boggling. He was still empowered by Jesus to do miracles, to cast out demons and to speak in the prophetic. <gasps> and yet Jesus says, get away from me. They were cast away from his presence. And in the end, they were called lawbreakers. 
he called them lawbreakers. In fact, that made them illegal disciples. They were doing the right things, but it was illegally the way they were doing them because they were working for him and they were not working with him. He didn't have full access to their intimate thoughts and desires and wishes. They weren't real with him. Ah. <laughs> so they were illegal disciples. My friend, this is what challenges me, and I hope to challenge you. An illegal disciple is one whose spiritual life goes this way, and their daily life goes that way. Their spiritual life and their daily life are not in sync. They say things, but they don't really mean them. They claim things about Jesus, but they don't really mean them. There's a phrase that says they speak like angels, but live like devils. And that's the disciple that Jesus is talking about here. We have a choice. These people that Jesus is describing had impressive spiritual accomplishments, but they had no personal connection with him. Now that's sad, and that's very scary. This is hard, but miracles prove nothing. I'm studying Exodus all over again, and even, even the sorcerers in Pharaoh's day were able to duplicate the first four miracles that Moses did. So miracles really don't prove anything. Knowing Jesus and allowing him to know us is our connection to him, and we are secure in our relationship because of our connection to him. John 15 calls it being attached to the vine. This warning is for us to evaluate as we approach this new year. Are we an illegal disciple doing things for God but without a daily connection to him? Or are we a disciple who is fully known and who fully is striving to know him? challenge number one. We'll close this out with a second challenge and the end of the Beatitudes of these four warnings. And it's another familiar story. It's the story in Matthew 7 verses 24 to 27 where it is of a wise man who builds his life on a rock. And then it is of a foolish man who builds his life on the sand. So we have two guys here. So this lesson is about the foundations, two types of foundations. The first was about two types of disciples. This is about two types of foundations. Now these foundations were what the house was built on. The house from the outside looked the same. Both the houses looked the same. But then the only difference was one was built on a rock and one was built on sand. The foundation the foundation. Then the storms came. The rain came on both. Heavy storms. Rain is what comes from above. Stormy life. Storms allowed by God into our life. Both had floods come up surrounding them. Floods are what comes up from the earth. Things that come up from the earth that surround our foundation and our life earthly storms. Then it says the winds blew. The winds blew on the sandy foundation home and the winds blew on the rock foundation home. See it's the storms in your life, it's the storms in my life that reveal our foundation, right? I'm here to tell you my friends, storms are coming in 2023. I, I can prophesy that with my eyes open, they're coming. So our are we built solidly on the rock or are we built shakily on the sand? Because the wise builder that Jesus is challenging us is the one who hears lessons like this one and many, many, many others. They hear lessons and they incorporate them, those lessons actually into their life. That's the wise builder. Their spiritual life and their daily life are the same their foundation is sure. 
But the stupid builder, as one translation puts it, is the one who listens to Bible lessons and listens to Bible studies and watch YouTube videos, but does nothing to work it out in their own life. My friend, Jesus' teachings are not incidental additions to our life. They're not some little just cute thing you put in your life. Jesus' teachings are foundational words in our life. Jesus' teachings are words for us to build our life on. That's what anchors us. That's what makes us wise. So wise is the one who does that. Their life is strong through all the storms because they are anchored to Jesus. But foolish is the one who hears what Jesus is saying and yeah, 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 never mind. Or maybe later when I get older, or maybe later when I have time, or maybe later when blah, blah, blah. Yeah, that's foolish. You see, it's doing the word that provides a secure foundation for us. It's actually doing the word that makes us wise, not just hearing it. So Jesus' final warning to wrap up all of the, the Beatitudes is he asks, which builder are you? Are you a wise one who builds your life on the word, on the rock? Or are you the foolish one? who hears things, but you just don't even act on what you hear. You just hear it kind of, as my dad would say, goes in one ear and out the other. Let me leave you with these reminders. Jesus gave us four warnings. Are you gonna walk the narrow way or the wide way? Are you gonna listen to false teaching or godly teaching? Are you gonna be an intimate disciple or just a doer works and is your foundation sure or is it built on sand my friend let's do some evaluation this year let's do some spiritual work and let's get things aligned with God's way for 2023 thank you for checking in please check back 2023 is going to be excited here at spiritual Thank you. See you soon.